In what has been described as an unmitigated firearms crisis, Parliament has heard that management of the police's central firearm registry is far below standard and that police have not been tracking ammunition sales properly. Police officers may also be helping criminals get the guns. One of the tasks of the registry is to prevent the smuggling of illegal firearms by improving the control of legal weapons. Last month, the Global Initiative Against Transnational Organized Crime released a report which revealed that there is at least one assassination a week in South Africa. Earlier, Iman spoke to firearms law expert Martin Hood. CFR is the place where all firearm records are kept for legally held firearms in South Africa. Oh, wow. Okay, so you were going to keep it to the point. That doesn't happen often, I can tell you, on television. <laughs> <laughs> Not for the terms. <laughs> but, but, Martin, as you observed, um, the submissions in Parliament heard in respect of the parlor states of, of gun controls, ammunition controls. What are some of your areas of concern? Well, back in 2004, when this legislation was promulgated, it was required that there be a digitized system in place. The reason for that is that it would give immediate access to up-to-date information. And a simple example, that of ammunition sales. If, if information was not manually inputted, but it was digitally inputted at the time of sale, the police could look at sales of ammunition to pick up linkages between sales and the, the happening of crimes in certain areas. And they could use the... Um, Firearms Control Act as a crime mapping tool. Once you start mapping crimes, you can put strategies in to deal with crimes and then you start preventing crimes. That's one simple example. Another example is the police are required to prove that someone who's charged with illegal possession of a firearm is actually illegally in possession of that firearm. If you can't rely on the integrity of the records that the police have, you're not going to prove beyond reasonable doubt that that person was illegally in possession of a firearm and they're going to be acquitted. So it contributes towards the declining state of our criminal justice system. Uh, that's really important and it's really alarming what you're sharing with us now. Just give us a sense. Uh, I mean, if you don't have the information, that's absolutely fine. But how prevalent is, uh, are these acquittals or cases getting thrown out because police aren't able to do that? Well, I think you just need to look at the conviction statistics that are released on a regular basis. And my, my recollection, and I could be wrong, is that about 80% of criminal prosecutions are not successful. And that is generally because of poor police work. Our, our police's ability to investigate crimes has declined considerably in the last two decades. And the state of the Central Firearms Registry's records is just yet another example of that decline. So it really does contribute substantially towards acquittals of people who should be uh, convicted of crimes involving firearms. Did I hear you correctly? 80% of cases? Yes, that's, uh, that's the statistic I, I recall having read recently, yes. Conviction rates are very, very poor in this country and they have been steadily declining as a result of the capacity of the police or lack of capacity, and also because of the National Prosecuting Authority. There's corruption at many levels within the criminal justice system, and there's corruption at many levels within the South African police services. And again, I just want to emphasize that the state of the Central Firearms Registry is merely a reflection of the overall poor condition of the South African police services. Oh my goodness. Just to go back to that point you highlighted just now, we did expect a turnaround on some of the issues given that 2019 judgment, in fact, SAPS was directed to get their records di digitized and sorted out. They still haven't. Whose head should roll, especially in a country well, where uh, gun pr proliferation uh, is directly connected, uh, one would imagine, uh, logically, to the high rate of, of violent crimes and murders in the country? I was the attorney that got that court order. And I can tell you unequivocally that in the last four years, the police have done everything possible to avoid complying with that court order. They have blamed third parties. They have said that they don't have the capacity. They have made false statements in court under oath. There's currently a contempt of court application judgment pending against the Minister of Police for not complying with that court order. That court order stipulated that the police had four years to implement a digital system. 
I heard yesterday from the Minister of Police that only in April this year, and that is nearly four years after the issue of the court order and when the court order should be fully implemented, they've only issued the tender in April. We don't know who the tender was given to. We don't know the capacity and ability of the successful tenderer to implement a system. And we don't know the time frames. And I want to emphasize, it is of great concern to me and the industry that the police have done everything possible to avoid complying with that court order. Uh Martin, there's so much, and in fact, this should be the subject of a bigger roundtable, and I definitely think that we need to circle back to this topic because the implications are just huge, and the accountability certainly does need to be reinforced. But we have to think about society, Martin, and the families affected by or lost to gun violence. It seems we're not getting any safer, and worryingly, police may also be colluding with criminals to get their hands on some serious hardware. Well, there's no doubt that that is the case. There are a number of current prosecutions underway for corruption where police officers have allowed um, people that would not otherwise qualify uh, for firearm licenses to get firearm licenses. But there's an even more basic level of corruption, and that is the theft of firearms out of police custody. And it is far more widespread than the police are prepared to admit. And it has been... Um, the subject of a great deal of political interference. Investigations into the theft of firearms from, um, from police stations has been suppressed. There's a, a, a project Impi that was started in the Western Cape and two senior Western Cape police officers lost their jobs because they insisted on um, investigating through project Impi. That's one example. There are other examples that I'm personally aware of where there have been substantial thefts of firearms from police stations and the police have tried to deal with it internally, but have not admitted that those firearms have been stolen. So there is a fundamental problem with corruption at station level. And then there's a problem with corruption and incompetence at the central firearms registry. There is no doubt that proper procedures and the legislation are not being applied properly. Mm -hmm.